Very so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and today a video I am very excited about. This is an announcement video and what I want to talk to you about today is my upcoming read along of Diane Setterfield's The Thirteenth Tale. This is going to be a bit of a different read along for me. It's going to take place in less than a year, very exciting, and it's not going to be of a classic, it's going to be of a 21st century novel and the read along is just going to be two weeks long in the final two weeks of September. So the read-along is going to take place between Monday the 17th of September and Sunday the 30th of September, so two weeks long and the basic idea is to read about 32 pages a day. But I'm going to have a full reading schedule down in the description and also on the Goodreads page which I will link down below so that you can go and join it if you want to join in and that's going to detail the amount of pages you should read a day. Basically I've written a schedule which is roughly 30-ish pages a day but stopping at chapters rather than in the middle of a random chapter so some days it's like 25 and some days it's like 40 but yeah you can obviously follow it fairly roughly don't feel that you have to read the right amount every day but if you want to join in with the read along please do join the goodreads group and tweet about it and write about it on instagram the hashtag we'll be using is 13th tail along which is a bit of a mouthful but I couldn't think of anything more catchy so I am sorry about that. Everything will be linked down below in the description but now that we've got the logistics out of the way I want to tell you why you should read this book. Firstly this is my favourite modern novel, in fact this is my favourite novel that is not Victorian. Do I mean that? Do I love it more than Pride and Prejudice? Maybe, maybe not. It's my favourite novel that is not 19th century, I think we can safely say that. I love it an awful, awful lot. It is brilliant and incredible and I can't recommend it enough. Number two, this is a book for book lovers. It is full of literary references on every page and it is a book especially for lovers of 19th century literature. Some Dickens references, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Bronte references throughout the book, which is something I absolutely love. The central character, our narrator Margaret Lee, she grew up in a bookshop. Her father runs an antiquarian bookshop and that is the place she has grown up and spent her life. She loves books and books are familiar to her. The shop itself makes next to no money. It is a place to write and receive letters, a place to while away the hours waiting for the next international book fair. In the opinion of our bank manager it is an indulgence, one that my father's success entitles him to. Yet in reality, my father's reality and mine, I don't pretend reality is the same for everyone, the shop is the very heart of the affair. It is a repository of books, a place of safety for all the volumes, once so lovingly written, but at present no one seems to want. And it is a place to read. A is for Austin, B is for Bronte, C is for Charles, and D is for Dickens. I learned my alphabet in this shop, my father walking along the shelves, me in his arms, explaining alphabetization at the same time as he taught me to spell. I learned to write there too, copying out names and titles onto index cards that are still there in our filing box 30 years later. The shop was both my home and my job. It was a better school for me than school ever was, and afterwards it was my own private university. It was my life. It's so good. Number three, it is a book not just for book lovers but for lovers of writing and writers. The other central character in this book, aside from Margaret Lee, is Viva Winter who is this incredibly best-selling author who has written a lot of novels that have been incredibly successful and everyone worships her but no one knows anything about her and she hires Margaret Lee to write her biography for her and then starts telling her the story the sort of story of her life. Number four, this book is full of unreliable narration, which is something I love. Viva Winter is an incredibly unreliable narrator. Margaret Lee is at times an unreliable narrator. And the story within a story structure of this book is something I just love. I love it so much. It's one of my favourite structures in books and it's done so, so very well here. And the unreliability of Viva Winter's narration and the way Margaret Lee has to like kind of unpack it is just beautiful and wonderful. Number six, this book has the best twist I have ever encountered in a novel. The best ever. Number seven, this book has great staying power. I have read it more than once and although it is in some ways a mystery book, a book full of mysteries to be solved, even when you know what's going on and you understand everything, it's still an incredibly powerful read. I'm really really excited to reread it for a third time because even though I know what's going on, spotting the patterns and the clues left to a to the story is just wonderful and fantastic. Number eight, the writing is absolutely beautiful. I already read you a passage from this book so you can hear the kind of writing it is and throughout I just, I think it's fantastically written, superbly done, absolutely my kind of literary fiction that is accessible in its writing, not too experimental, not too flowery, 
but good, rich, powerful, poignant writing. Number nine, this book does interesting things with time, both in terms of taking place in two different dual timelines, both in sort of Margaret Lee in the present and Viva Winter in her past, but also it's never really clear when it's set. It was interesting when I watched the television film they did a few years back, and that like pinpointed everything very securely in time and it really bothered me because one of the things I like about this book is the kind of ambiguity of time, the way that certain characters seem to exist almost outside of time and the kind of fairy tale nature to the story that Viva Winter tells Margaret. The reason number 10 is the balance. I have used this term before to talk about authors like Emily St. John Mandel and Charles Dickens. This book has such a brilliant balance of brilliant plot, wonderful characterization fascinating themes superbly dealt with and beautiful elegant writing that pulls it all together so so well. So I hope that has given you a bit of a clue of why perhaps you might like this book. Like I said it is a book for book lovers and it is entirely up my street. Like I've never encountered a book that feels more just sort of perfection in a book for me. After I made Nick read this about four years ago he turned to me and said are you sure you didn't write this book? And I think that's because it is like so much just my kind of thing. I wish I had written this book. This was the book like as a teenager wanting to be a writer and sometimes like struggling with writing and not so sure about what to do with it. I used to sometimes just pick up this book and reread like a chapter of it and it would remind me why I wanted to be a writer because it's just absolutely the kind of book I want to write. I love it a lot and I can't wait to read it again and for lots of you to read it because it's brilliant and I really hope you all will like it too. I feel like if you have similar book taste in me, both in terms of contemporary taste and sort of classics taste, I think you will really like this. And also because I think it's so brilliant that I don't understand why anyone wouldn't and I love it so much. So there we go. Okay, gush over. <laughs> Please let me know down in the comments if you would be interested in joining in with this read-long. Please do join the Goodreads group which I'll link down below and tweet about it and Instagram about it and stuff like that. And I'm waving my hands back so I'm really excited, I'm talking very fast, it's all good. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.